Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA is a place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. For more than 60 years, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, has held to a singular and enduring mission to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. Working with innovators inside and outside of government, DARPA has repeatedly delivered on that mission, transforming revolutionary concepts and even seeming impossibilities into practical capabilities. Welcome to Voices from DARPA, a window onto DARPA's programs and partners. My name is Randy Atkins, and I'll be your DARPA host today. It is commonly said that we know more about the dark side of the moon than the oceans here on Earth. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, less than 10% of the global ocean floor has been mapped using high-resolution sonar. Only about 20% of the global ocean has been surveyed at all. Yet especially as we grapple with climate change, there is no more important time to better understand the oceans. Their circulations heavily influence our climate. Hurricanes are born and grow there. The oceans are the greatest source of oxygen on Earth, and seas are a largely untapped energy resource. The Manta Ray Project really came out of the need for understanding more about the ocean environment and being able to have underwater vehicles that last longer than order of a couple of hours or a couple of days. Underwater vehicles are advantageous to research, industry, military, all sorts of different applications. A main driver for wanting to go toward underwater vehicles is their ability to go to depths that humans and many human systems are not able to go to. You can start to look at the vast area that the ocean covers on our planet and the depths that a lot of interesting things happen on in the ocean. And we tend to quickly get outside the reach of many manned systems or other areas that we would like to touch without robots. Kyle Warner has been a DARPA program manager, or PM, since 2018. My story with DARPA was a journey that started when I was at a research position in my undergraduate work. My advisor was a former DARPA PM who was a, an Air Force officer in his previous life, and he inspired me to not only go after my doctorate, but also learn more about DARPA. And ever since then, it's it's been on my roadmap of how do I get there and how do I start to do some game-changing technologies and what does that look like? My doctorate was in autonomy and marine robotics, focused through mechanical engineering at MIT. But you were also in the military. Correct. So I was active duty Navy for a little over 20 years before retiring. So I was a submarine officer at the beginning of my career and transitioned to engineering duty, doing mostly shoreside engineering for ships and autonomous systems. What's it like being on a submarine? It's a a very rewarding place to be, but there are certainly some limitations and creature comforts that we don't get to enjoy, similar to our, our friends back on shore. Turns out, robots don't seem to mind the lack of creature comforts, so Kyle wants to give them better abilities to make themselves at home in the ocean for longer periods of time. Manta Ray is really looking at how do we start to explore an underwater vehicle that's capable of lasting longer durations, but is also capable of carrying payload. One thing that you notice in underwater vehicle design is you typically can have either a vehicle that lasts very long periods of time but can't really carry anything with it. But if you want something that can carry a sensor or a payload that is perhaps a larger size or mass or has a larger energy draw, you tend to need a more traditional underwater vehicle, propeller-driven in most cases. And those tend to not have anywhere near the endurance. As the project title implies, the Manta Ray team is looking for innovative designs and suggesting teams might look to nature for ideas. We were interested in finding new approaches to vehicle design, uh, not just on the energy side, but we're also looking at lower propulsive techniques to try to break out of the typical torpedo shape that you tend to see with many of these vehicles. We wanted to choose a name that gave an image far outside the reach of a, a slender body design with a propeller on the end. And I think Manta Ray invokes that visual. Uh, Manta Ray is a, a beautiful creature. They're a lot of fun to watch in the wild. We have certainly opened the aperture to whatever industry wanted to put forward. The name was more of a fit to the idea of wanting to break the mold rather than building a program around a fish. 
As it turns out, a design much like a manta ray is a contender. Meanwhile, though, current uncrewed underwater vehicles are far from the goal of independently navigating the sea. And so you can either chase them around with a host vessel, which is expensive and takes a lot of time and requires humans above them, offer them care and feeding and everything else that comes with that, or you can find a way to extend their endurance under sea. The longer that an underwater vehicle can go without requiring the care and feeding of human operators, the less human operators need to be in a specific location to offer that assistance to the underwater vehicle. So in part, part of this project from a military utility perspective is reducing the burden, if you will, on these human operated ships and allowing them to focus on more human centric missions and allow the robots to be underwater for longer periods of time. But of course, that requires a constant source of energy. One of the things that's really interesting about ocean resources is that they are persistent. It's this largely untapped resource. You go to the ocean and you see that there's perpetually moving waves. We know that we have tides. These are perpetual resources. Kelly Rule is a research and development mechanical engineer at the Energy Department's Sandia National Laboratories, focusing on energy from the ocean. She is providing insights to teams working on the manta ray project. The way I think about marine energy is it includes many different fields. It includes ocean wave energy, so that's converting the movement of the ocean into power or meeting other end user needs. We have many forms of current energy, so that can be river current energy, that can be ocean current, and that can be tidal current, right? So there's many different things that drive current, but the, the concepts harvesting energy for those different current resources are similar. They're not the same, but they're similar. Salinity gradient, there's differences in salinity in the ocean, and so that's an opportunity for energy capture. We also have ocean thermal, so it's kind of the, a similar concept where you have gradients and in, in the temperature in the ocean, and so we can capture energy through that. Within marine energy space, I think that there's actually opportunity to leverage any of those resources. I've seen concepts that leverage ocean thermal, that leverage wave energy, that leverage current energy. They're all very promising, but... That really depends on the intended application. So if you're interested in maybe closer to surface transport, wave energy is a really great resource. Most of the wave energy is distributed near the surface. If you want to go into deeper water rate, that means that wave energy wouldn't be a great resource for that. Similarly, current energy is a very localized resource. Where we have tidal straits, those are unique locations in the world. So it's a very specific place that one would need to harvest a tidal energy resource. A challenge and opportunity of the Manta Ray Project is to continuously harvest and use ocean energy while in transit. Something that's unique about marine energy is that it can be co-located with the end use. And with that means an opportunity for a reduction in power transmission losses, which is huge. Manta Ray and Marine Energy has the opportunity to open doors for us that are not currently open because we're able to have power in places we didn't have it previously. Proving a technology and buying down that risk really opens the door to adoption of that technology for other end users as well, you know, civilian applications. Manta Ray Program Manager Kyle Warner again. With our partners at the Department of Energy, we have an even wider aperture of some of the renewable energy from the ocean that we can start to tackle. We also are looking at the potential of transferring some of this technology back where some of this research actually started before we picked it up with Manta Ray. The Department of Energy has been looking very strongly at the ability to harness energy for commercial grid purposes, and some of the advances we've made very much may be transferable back to them. The manta ray challenges extend beyond energy, of course, such as communication. So communication at sea is a challenge that's not new to us, but it's one that's not often well appreciated by those that haven't experienced it. Many of the traditional radio frequency transmissions are attenuated within an inch of coming down through the surface. Another challenge is just being in the middle of a turbulent sea full of salt water. We see those sorts of problems even with our manned vessels, where you have biofouling, corrosion, and all the normal things that start to eat away at a man-made product that is in the middle of the big, harsh ocean environment. One of the big areas that's a, a challenge and motivator for Manta Ray 
is how do we start to remove some of those barriers to duration and endurance to an undersea vehicle? If we can stay at sea for a very long time, how do we overcome the navigation and autonomy challenges that we haven't had to really face in underwater vehicles because they tend not to be at sea for those durations, at least for complex missions? This manta ray mission may be important on many fronts. We know that we have a lot of the ocean that we really don't understand or don't have a good mapping of, but that generally just accounts for static features such as the seafloor. The average depth of the ocean is about 3,700 meters. So to put that in perspective, it's about eight Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. And that's just the average. If you look at the deepest depth, it's about 11,000 meters, which is about 25 Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. That's a lot of volume to cover, and we really don't have the technical means to do that yet at scale. We don't really have a good understanding either of many of the living organisms that are in those areas, and especially the trends that may be occurring with them. And as you consider that 50 to 80 percent of the Earth's atmospheric oxygen is coming from the ocean, we should be very concerned of maintaining a healthy environment within the ocean. And one of the things that we can do if we have the ability to monitor these areas in a sustainable and scalable way is actually keep an eye on those things and look for trends and understand if we're causing any effects that require any action. It's helpful for the military, it's helpful for industry, it's helpful for academia. It's helpful in general to the human population to understand not only what is already here, but also understand the baseline of what we have so we can detect changes and ensure that we are preserving our environment. It's been very fascinating to watch the pace and the progress of the program as they overcome challenges that are unique to the program. And in many cases, they're overcoming challenges that no one else has overcome before. There's always a huge excitement around seeing a concept that you've seen on paper and presented and discussed for months and years, actually fabricated and in the water. And the goal is clear. An autonomous underwater vehicle that is out operating on its own, harvesting energy and completing whatever mission it's been given. Many of the subcomponents are actively being tested throughout the country. And we have several items that are starting to be assembled at the full scale. And within the next year and a half, we anticipate having our, our full scale at sea demonstrations complete. Thanks for joining us. Thanks also to Tom Shortridge for his partnership in producing this program. For more information on the Manta Ray Project or other work at DARPA, please visit DARPA.mil.